Okay, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, this is DAO 2002 CPD webinar series organized by the class of DAO 2002. My name is Naseem Nakvi. I'm the uh, organizer along with Dr. Mansoor Ali, who has also joined us today along with other batchmates. Our first presentation today, very important topic, Dr. Abdul Momin Kazi from Ahan Hospital, a specialist in pediatrics and epidemiology. And our second uh, presenter is Sami Ahmed. Hopefully she uh, would be able to make it. We are still trying to get in touch with her to confirm. So uh, over to Momin Kazi, who's going to talk about evaluation and implementation of digital health interventions. Thank you so much, uh, Mansoor and Naseem. Uh, so so I, I would start with congratulating both uh, Mansoor and Naseem. You can hear me well, right? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So, so uh, yeah, I start with um, Mansoor and Naseem. Congratulations on your abstract. Um, uh, on Dagana, so it's wonderful. Uh, it's it's close to an ear, and uh, you you already have an abstract, and so many people are interested in in this and join this webinar. So so bravo and good effort, and uh, and it's uh, and and keep it up. Uh, I I'll just give a short introduction of myself and a start. So so I'm basically I'm an assistant professor of research. So my Main focus, I'm not a pediatrician, but I'm an epidemiologist uh, with uh, focus on vaccine preventable disease as well as, uh, as surveillance. Uh, um, so Mansoor visited us and he wanted me to give a talk. Um, we had a discussion and he wanted me to give a talk on starts and epidemiology subject, but I thought uh, my recent focus and my PhD focus is also digital health and I thought it's better off to give you a flavor of what I'm doing in digital health these days. And so what I'm going to cover today is, uh, is a couple of topics just, uh, just to give you a, a, a flavor on, on what's going on, what's going on in the world of digital health and uh, what, uh, what are we and my group at Pediatric is doing. So I'm going to talk about digitizing a surveillance site, how, and also it's it's my journey of digital health as well. Um, then we'll talk about geospatial data engagement in care uh, and data visualization. And I'll try my best on how different fields and different folks can uh, 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 how these fields are connected to 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 different uh, different uh, fields and and different uh, folks as well. So the, the new term is digital health, but you may have know, known this uh, term by the name of, uh, by e-health, telehealth, m-health, uh, other terms are ICT um, and health informatics. But these days, now we call it more digital health because these are interrelated. Uh, so just a quick definition. So in e-health, anything which is healthcare supported by electronic uh, processes, and um, uh, telehealth is basically a physician talking to um, uh, uh, a treating uh, a healthcare provider treating uh, his or her patient through a screen. And mobile health is or M health is usually defined as uh, medical and public health practices supported by mobile devices. So just to define. Um, so what are different kind of interventions or uh, what are some of the mobile health uh, different domains? And uh, I, I'm going to talk very broadly just to give you an idea uh, what, uh, how, what are the different, uh, uh, different components of mobile, uh, of, um, of, of digital health. So one is, uh, of course, through mobile phones. Uh, uh, so any interventions through um, uh, through through the mobile phone, it could be like telehealth or uh, through SMS or through automated calls. So it could be one way, two way communication. Uh, most of these are behavior change communication or engagement in care. So reminding a patient for vaccination or for uh, to uh, to take insulin or to take their drugs or or uh, or any management or awareness related messages uh, it can also uh, these days there's another strategy which is uh, conditional cash so the cash can be transferred 
to to the cell or the mobile phone. Uh, other, um, as I talked about, it, it could be a, through smartphones as well. So text messages, voice, or videos uh, through a smartphone uh, that can be converted into an app as well. So we are using a lot of apps like WhatsApp is, a, is 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 an app, but we just use it for communication. But a lot of um, health related uh, specific apps are or algorithm are also being used these days. Uh, another strategy, um, very commonly, uh, and, and it's a coming up field is the e-devices. Uh, e-devices can be e-ultrasound, echo, echo, ECG, uh, uh, or um, uh, uh, an ophthalmoscope or e-telescope. And these are also very useful because these are then connected uh, to a system uh, for telehealth. So then the telehealth is not only you are treating your patient through a screen, but then um, uh, a nurse or a staff um, can examine the patient and the doctor can directly kind of examine the patient rather than depending on a third person. And then what we do uh, a lot, uh, uh, and I use a lot in, in public health um, practice is um, uh, digitalized questionnaire. So uh, the questionnaire or CRF forms are, are, ma are uh, made on uh, tablets or phones and data is collected directly. It can be collected real time. It can be connected to different dashboards and it can, and they can do the geo, uh, geo um, uh, referencing as well so that uh, we can take the coordinates of the location and then uh, make different uh, geospatial maps. So the question is why now? Um, we have been using internet, we have, the phone is there before we were, we were even born. So why technology right now? Uh, why there is a surge of technology suddenly? Why are we talking about AI? Why are we talking about uh, uh, ML? Why are we talking about uh, data mining? So the primary main um, leapfrog is the is the cell phone use. So as you can see now, the, the, the mobile phone is being used all over the world and with a very high coverage. Um, however, the only difference right now in low middle income country is use of smartphone, which will also, um, uh, with time, that, that difference, is different, a difference will get over as well. However, um, uh, uh, the use of a mobile phone, a simple mobile phone is, um, and things like calling and text messaging is, uh, is very common. And on an average 7.7 .7 billion mobile phones, there are 7.7 .7 mobile phone subscribers with around 237, uh, uh, 8.5 billion uh, person to person SMS are sent on a, uh, on a daily basis. So the only thing which one needs to keep in mind, what kind of interventions you want to uh, use and what kind of, um, uh, uh, what kind of technology your um, uh, population or end user is using. So, so for example, here for us in Pakistan, one third of population only use smartphone. So that is, uh, so if I want to design a, an app, then it ha I, and I need to make sure that it is for the population which, which is using app or not rather than for the two third of the population which don't even have a smartphone. So I'll start with, uh, so I'll shift gear and I'm, I'm not gonna uh, talk about uh, my journey and how I kind of ended up in, 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 in uh, uh, doing uh, uh, digital help. And so it started with a geospatial um, or uh, 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 a project. Um, when I came back from uh, Vanderbilt joint AKU, and this was a task given to me uh, to um, set up a surveillance site. And, um, and so Department of Pediatric have uh, four demographic surveillance sites and uh, a population of 300 to 400,000. And uh, so we had to set up a, um, a maternal and child surveillance site following all uh, pregnant women and newborn. And so we uh, decided that you know, the first thing was to, why don't we georeference and have the coordinates um, mark the site properly, have them in clusters, uh, have them labeled, uh, then take, we took the coordinates of each and every household. And since we had the unique ID of each pregnant woman and all her children under five years of age, we connected that. This is our GIS software. And once that database was connected, 
uh, we were able to make uh, different kinds of maps. Initially, this was our uh, practice. Uh, this was our strategy for basically, we just wanted to do monitoring so that uh, the data is clean. And this data was this uh, demographic surveillance site data was our denominator for numerous uh, studies, clinical trials, where the, um, uh, so this was our denominator where our numerator data uh, can come in. But little did we know that we ended up not only make, making different, uh, you know, a full digital library, but uh, uh, different map. This is one of the clusters map uh, to identify the household. And then we were able to, uh, have, we got uh, etiology study as well. And they were, uh, we were able to um, uh, um, uh, look into different etiology as well. And all the time, uh, what I was doing, I was kind of following our uh, epidemiology guru, the John Snow, who uh, made a similar map uh, of London Street in 1854 uh, following the cholera epidemic. And uh, uh, those of us who uh, have visited that part must have seen the hand pump. So little did I know that after 150 years, around 150 to 60 years, a, a similar epidemic will happen in Hyderabad, unfortunately, in 2017. And there I worked with uh, my team uh, was called in to work with to support a team who was uh, doing the, uh, the, uh, the, the outbreak investigation. And our task was to understand, to support them and to understand what is the main reason. So, so, so eventually we were able to uh, not only um, identify it was an XDR and unfortunately only um, this is a very serious stuff. Only azithromycin and carbapenem works uh, with this bug. And um, Alhamdulillah, we did the outbreak and the, now the, the vaccine is available and the vaccine has been, uh, it, been administered as well. Uh, and this work uh, got published in, uh, in Lancet ID as well. And so uh, this was, the, I was sitting in the E, saw this and when I saw this, I said, well, this is something is, when I saw these clustering, it was just few, uh, few do, uh, red dot, this, this came afterwards. And then I was uh, able to identify, uh, when we added different layers, we were able to identify that it is because of, um, this is waterborne and this is not a samosa pakora epidemic. And so we talked to the different stakeholders and, 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 and so we were able to convince them that this is an epidemic, this is serious, and this is due to water contamination. And we did, uh, and we made some, we plotted different uh, maps and then plotted it all over uh, plotted the cases all over Pakistan as well. And as you can see in Karachi, and actually it, it went from uh, very quickly spread from Hyderabad to Karachi. And then uh, we had different discussion with stakeholders, even um, these map, uh, I showed these map to the, to the health minister as well. And, and then we came up with a strategy uh, that, um, uh, and, and we were able to convince them and we showed them that, you know, these are and there are some of the areas which have which have more uh, high burden than as compared to other areas, and then we were uh, and and so the uh, we were able to administer the vaccine as well. And so now uh, TCV vaccine, which is typhoid conjugated vaccine, is part of the EPI. And right now, uh, catch up um, uh, strategies where where we where where. Uh, the cases are more is being uh, implemented, and uh, school campaigns are also going on. So we have done a couple of different things with geospatial data. So starting from our digital library to helping in different um, randomized trials, as well as uh, uh, doing a household survey using uh, uh, maps, uh, doing, uh, uh, using it as a sampling strategy. I talked about XDR, and then uh, the, um, and I'm also, then also part of the recent uh, 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 Nordero, um uh, out they're also part of the HIV. Sorry, I can't show a lot of maps, but we are using the same strategy to understand what is the reason of the 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 outbreak and uh, where the the major reasons of how, where, how the infection came in. in the first place. Well, the hypothesis is of course the needles, but then how did it spread so quickly and in a specific area? So those are some of the things which we are still investigating, and um, and so and and our initial paper. The reporting paper just got uh, published in Lancet ID as well. So I'll shift gear again. And now I'm going to talk 
talk about uh, uh, a very simple uh, intervention known as a, a text message. Uh, and uh, the question is, is the text message, because text message has been really used to improve vaccination coverage for, for to remind patient for their uh, medicines and, uh, and for their insulin. And, the, and, and that's what my question was, that is text message the magic pill um, we are looking for? And so, uh, so we, um, a few years back, we got a, 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 a provision from a grant from WHO uh, to more, to do uh, e surveillance or monitored supplementary immunization activity that is polio administration uh, house to house and by sending simple two uh, two way sms first sms asking did the vaccinator uh, get up uh, vaccinate up ke ghar aake aap patre pilaye hai ya nahi aur jawab dene ke liye press one for ha uh, two for uh, no and three for don't know and uh, if they replied, then did your child, for example, Ahmed got vaccinated or not? And through through the simple uh, system, we were able to um, uh, get the uh, get the immunization or polyimmunization coverage, which was quite comparable to mobile uh, to answers we received through call and through ground monitoring tech uh, technique of LQAS. The problem was how do you scale it up? Uh, you can't, I can't, so, you know, we got the numbers through a household survey. You can't do it for like 30 million children, uh, children, under five children all over Pakistan. So the pilot strategy which we tried was using a uh, mobile phone or, uh, or cell phone tower coverage area. And in that area, we just bombard uh, these messages and, and so asking them, uh, did the vaccinator visit it or not? And the second message, if they replied, then the second message was your child got uh, vaccinated or not? And do you have a child under five? And that strategy kind of worked very well as well. And since we, uh, in stage one, uh, st uh, since we had taken the coordinates, we were able to understand um, uh, the, the location and uh, through the township, we were also able to look at uh, the, the density of the coverage. Uh, so, the, so we have published um, uh, I've got, uh, on, uh, on this, the use of text messages, automated calls, and uh, uh, the overall uh, access and uh, usage of mobile phone, uh, and the role of digital health in, 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 and the role of mobile phone in immunization. Uh, and, uh, and this has been a good and turned out to be a good uh, strategy for engagement in care. However, this can be used for other fields as well. Uh, just to now finish off with uh, one of my study, uh, which I recently uh, completed. It's, uh, it was funded through Grand Challenge Canada and through a mixed method, uh, we evaluated whether a different kind of messages, that is one way, two way SMS, one way, two way calls can improve immunization coverage. And so we started with um, uh, with, um, it was both qualitative and quantitative. So we did interviews before and after the trial and we sent uh, uh, weekly messages. And the messages uh, were according to uh, their uh, preference, according to their requirement, we did detailed interviews. Also, we understood what was their barrier. So the barrier for not vaccinating their kids and both um, uh, for uh, messages in uh, in uh, uh, for text messages as well as messages related uh, uh, as well as uh, audio messages, and so uh, once data was collected on uh, on a cell phone on a tablet, it went into the cloud and and then it was uh, personalized according to the barrier they choose, the language they choose, the time of the day they want to get the message, and it was then automated and I can see it on the dashboard and then the messages were sent according to the study arm. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the overall result we got that uh, in Pakistan, so the sample size was around 3,383. In Pakistan, there's 99 per, and our surveillance site was Karachi and Matyari. So the, the, there's the access, 99% of uh, participants means that they have access to mobile phone. And um, uh, the interactive voice recording or the two-way automated arm uh, there was an there was 25% improvement in vaccination coverage as compared to uh, the intervention arm. Uh, I'll uh, finish off uh, the talk with 
just uh, walking you through uh, uh, through the third component, the third part, which is data visualization. So uh, we do a, uh, since I told you, we collect data on on, on e questionnaire, and then we um, we have we have work on different dashboards so that you can visualize the data in real time and according to the requirement. And this this can uh, this is also this can easily done for public health and for clinical data as well. And so my team is also working with. Uh, different uh, teams within AKU to look into how uh, we can visualize data and how we can look into into uh, uh, different data and not only just uh, from technology point of view but uh, both qualitative and quantitative scientists uh, sit and they design personalized dashboards. So this uh, again to visualize data better. I work with um, um, with uh, SL4 or Department of Pediatrics, and we worked on how they, uh, we can visualize their um, inpatient and outpatient data, and also how to uh, how do we improve uh, patient experience. So this is one of our staff who, uh, as the patient comes in on day one. Uh, they are asking about the administrative process feedback and have a checklist and then we have scored the checklist according to green is good, uh, yellow is all right, red is bad and I can see it directly and then inform the chief nurse and then that data actually goes uh, in our main database for uh, machine learning and AI modeling as well and we've also made an app uh, fully for the department uh, uh, to collect data and to improve, uh, you know, so that uh, in, improve the uh, even the consultant clinic timing, inpatient, outpatient round, uh, uh, and and different activities uh, they uh, they are conducting. All right, uh, so I can give you a, a quick look of how a different dashboards looks like. So this is one of my study, um, which. Uh, I'm conducting right now. It is a mortality study. Unfortunately, uh, children under six months of age who who uh, 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 who who die at our field site. We are collecting their nasal swab to understand RSV burden. As RSV, one of is now the one of the main uh, main um, virus. We don't have any uh, uh, you know uh, uh, for which a vaccine is almost there, and so that's why it was very important for us to understand. Uh, the, uh, uh, because of that, and so uh, through uh, I I can see how uh, the daily data collection, monthly or weekly data collection is going on, and how many uh, tests have been done, and it is connected to. And we also have uh, social uh, media activity. Uh, how many WhatsApp messages uh, did we get from the field? Because they, their reaction time to collect a, a nasal swab. Uh, or from a of child who recently died is uh, is uh, within 45 minutes. So there are different so different activities are going on and different activities can be uh, captured through the dashboard. So in conclusion, implementation and evaluation are both essential for digital health-based intervention. You just can't only evaluate it uh, like an RC, uh, like other study. You have to implement the technology in order to evaluate it, and it's not only um, you you uh, look at is it working or not no you have to look into why and how question as well why is the technology important why is the technology is needed and how is the best way to use it so even if you have the most expensive technology but if it's of no use then just throw it in the dustbin and uh, the uh, um, uh, and, and 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 so i work with a lot of engineers and and they say well it's going to be it's going to be few months or few years and then they are going to take over uh, the medicine is never going to happen because it's the human factor which which you know you cannot uh, get away but technology needs to come uh, uh, we've seen a lot of technology buy in in, in, in banking and other field not in health and this because of the human factor and because there are two parallel worlds of of uh, uh, of uh, physicians or healthcare providers and, 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 and technology people, they have to come together. It will come, uh, but it has to, it, it has to be a, a mutual way and a human factor had, has to be, uh, has to be taken into account. And whatever intervention you use, it's technology or a vaccine or a, or, or a medicine, for us from the, from, from, from the health perspective, the main outcome should be 
to decrease morbidity. So with this, um, um, I think I'll end up my talk. Uh, I'm grateful. Uh, I do a lot of collaboration. This, this, is, uh, this, is my, uh, this is my research group. This is my staff I work with. Thank you. Thank you, Momin. Um, excellent presentation. I'm sure people will have lots of questions. Um, we have not been able to contact Samia. I'm not sure uh, if she's coming or... Um, so what we'll do is, uh, we'll, um, I'll open to the floor for questions in a minute. But I think what, uh, what I would do is uh, have uh, you uh, give some feedback on, uh, on these sessions. Um, I will open the floor to everyone. So, so you can all, uh, Saqib is already raising his hands. Uh, so this is, so the next, next five to 10 minutes, what I'm going to do is, uh, just ask you if you have any feedback for the sessions that took place in 2019. Um, first, of all, first of all, thank you very much, uh, um, Momin, uh, for this presentation. Um, guys, I have to apologize. I've tried to contact Samia. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a hold of her. Uh, she knew about the presentation today. I hope she's well. I hope she's doing okay. If anyone is in touch with Samia, could we just uh, find out whether she's all right? Um, apologies. We just have to surface with one presentation today. I'm really sorry about that. Okay, so um, before uh, we take questions, uh, guys, any feedback on what worked well and what could be improved for next year? Um, can I say something then? Yes, yes, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, yeah. Very right. so, so, first of all, good opportunity at the end of the year. Uh, a, a big a big thank you to both of you, Naseem and Mansoor, for this initiative and, and taking this forward. It takes a lot of effort to collaborate all this and coordinate it. So thank you. Um, I think that I've, I've not attended all sessions, but the ones I have, they, they've been brilliant. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very good opportunity, you know, just for some informal, informal teaching. And um, what you can improve, I think, I think you guys are doing fantastic. This was the first year. Things can only get better. The response has been gradually getting better and better. Attendance is improving. I think they're all plus points. So well done. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much, and, Sakib. And today's talk, uh, Moomin, well done. I, I joined slightly late, but I really enjoyed your uh, listening to your experience. Um, I'll, I'll ask a question later, but I'll, I'll wait for the people to connect. <laughs> so just, uh, just a couple of points. Thank you, Sakib, for the feedback. Um, guys, uh, before I forget, those of you, because quite a few new faces today, so those of you who are uh, who joined for the first time, uh, please send your email to Mansoor. Mansoor is the one who issues CPD certificates. So please email your, uh, e uh, send your email address to Mansoor on WhatsApp. And um, for future sessions, we'll be very grateful. It will make our life easier if you could please volunteer yourself and come forward with the with your talks. And as you can see that we you know we have been moving around with the timings as well. So we're not sticking to one timing to accommodate everybody. And sure. today's session, you know, we started 6 p.m. UK time to, to make sure our US colleagues can, you know, uh, make it. And I understand it's late in Pakistan, but we will, we will move around the timings to suit everyone and to, to suit all regions. <coughs> but please volunteer yourself. I think next month we are doing a Christmas quiz and some other small things, uh, some surprises from Mansoor. <laughs> so uh, please watch out uh, and, and keep an eye. It's 15th of December, Sunday. Uh, we are going to do slightly early uh, because of yeah. the uh, school holidays and other things. Okay, so... <clears throat> so yeah, give, just give me a second, Naseem. Uh, thank you very much. Whilst I'm actually focusing on Mashud, I'm seeing Mashud here. Mashud, you're happy to do the presentation in January then. Is that right? Just to make it clear. So I think it's you and Amir Zedi. Um, any problems, just to let me know in advance. But yeah, and I, I, need, I need your full names and your place of work and title of talk, please. <laughs> Thank you. So, any other feedback, question. guys? Actually, sorry, I'll, I'll wait. It's been my uh, first session. Sorry, who is this, please? Who is this? Uh, it's Tahira here. Tahira. Oh, hi, Tahira. Hi, Tahira. Assalamualaikum. Hello. Uh, I've, never, I've, I've never managed to join. I have, to be honest, uh, I think I think the time is more suitable. So I just tried to, uh, like I said to you, I finished my drama serial and then tried to call, just try to download the app. 
and it was pretty pretty easy to be honest so i would probably spread the word as well that it's quite easy you know like i'm i'm standing in my kitchen at the moment trying to cook the evening meal and at the same time i was able to hear all of this and it was quite a, i would say an interesting but a topic that is not usually discussed you know <coughs> as such so that was quite useful um it's so thank you very much naseem and uh, mansoor honey you guys have been on it for a long time but i'll try my best especially with the time to try and you know get involved next time maybe do something i'm a gp with an occupational health uh, special interest so i'll try and see if i can do something and, and please spread time. the word please spread the word i will i will in my female counterparts please thank you okay sure. <clears throat> i have a question for moment yes sakur <laughs> hi moment how are you you okay yeah, ji i'm doing well i'm fine i'm fine just a quick question here well done um, uh, digital health interventions are always the way forward i experience in my clinics that a lot of patients come and give me information that they retrieve or download from mm. their fitbit app you know the new watches that they wear yes yes the wearables the they, wearables they often come to me and tell me um, these are my average heart rates you know th- this is what happens when i exercise so maybe cardiovascular wise because they are built in such a way what is your experience is it something that you guys have looked into or i have not i i i i'm working with variable so i did an echo people can mute okay so i i have worked uh, um, i have worked um, uh, with variables uh, not exactly on uh, on the fitbit or on those uh, related to the, the the exercise one but i work uh, we developing an rfid to track children uh, so this is one of the major argument um, we have uh, uh, that uh, what is the efficacy of these uh, of these technology and i think the number one question is we don't know and because we have never uh, done any research on them because we think it's just it's it's a it's a gadget but if it's a gadget and you are using it from your for health outcomes and uh, you're going to make diagnoses or you're going to treat your patient according to the input you get from these uh, gadgets then definitely uh, these needs to be uh, studied as well and recommended accordingly uh there has been a couple of studies um, in in us um, so sakib i would recommend uh, there's a journal jmir so you can go through that journal and it, uh, they do publish uh, a lot of uh, data on, uh, on on digital health and a lot of data uh, uh, on these apps so i think with time um uh, if they are using then uh, you know you you should uh, my recommendation is you you should look for those app which have been evaluated and kind of prescribe those app as well momin i have one short question uh, yeah. this data that you are collecting it's very uh-huh. very precious very important which how, one is how easy it is to how interoperable it is uh, in terms of if the great question mansoor institutions are trying to to use this i mean is this an intellectual property of 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 your institution or are you benefiting other public health departments as well great question mans uh, um, naseem so naseem it depends upon the contract we have usually so it's basically saga khan data for sure but most uh, but most of our data is public health data so i just wanted to show you this this slide and so uh, so you asked two question one is interoperability so interoperability is uh, different technologies talking to each other and so as you can see we collected data through uh, through cell phones it was an open uh, odk based questionnaire data went into the cloud and from the cloud it went to another portal and then to another cloud to the cell phone mobile phone uh, to a third party which send messages to two gate one is automated um call gateway and sms gateway so there were different technologies and the um uh, uh, operating and that's interoperability so um, it we we struggled few years back but i think we are doing fine and and i think that's the the keyword right now because diff- so the different technologies can talk to each other i think it it's doing well in pakistan and even in our subcontinent in africa uh, sorry in uh, europe and north america in africa they are struggling a little bit about this number 2 uh, so this is one 
so the and the, your second question was uh, the data so data is very important it becomes um, for us it's our um, the aku property but uh, it's a public health data so for example the geospatial data we shared it with the government of pakistan because for us the end outcome is it goes to the to public so that it can be used eventually to decrease mortality and morbidity uh, but i think with time as big data builds in uh, there will be a lot of uh, you know that would be the big data will become more important than gold and there will be a lot of um, uh, struggle around it uh, and uh, i think but one thing but what we try to do is that it doesn't stop us from the from the implication of uh, from uh, from public health Thank you, Mamin. Mamin, I've got a question. Um, how do you actually encourage physicians to start using uh, digitally um, uh, so kind of actually not only to in increase the awareness, but also to kind of actually start using the data uh, and also to improve patient care overall? So how, how do you encourage physicians who are a bit skeptical about using digital um, um, sort of media in healthcare? Uh, thank you, Mitsu. <laughs> I, so again, I, so for, for me, the you know the, the 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 definition is simple. You want to use a technology which is useful for you. You you and it it supports your work. Use that technology. A technology which is even million dollar or a billion dollar, and if it's of no use to you, then you know you you and if it's not making your work simple, then just throw it in the bin. Um, I talked about three different uh, uh, technologies or strategy. One was the geospatial, the, uh, the second one was engagement in care, and the third was the visualization. Uh, I think especially the, the last two ones are more, um, uh, can be uh, useful for any, any physician, a general practitioner, a cardiologist, or a, uh, or a nephrologist, or a urologist, because it's, uh, one is how do you engage with your patient? Uh, so you can use different strategies like uh, having an app, have a com communication with your patient, or you can uh, send messages, reminders, or educational or awareness messages to improve engagement and care. And that can be connected to different dashboards to visualize your, your patient as well. Uh, then of course, there are apps, different apps and different e-devices. So depending on how much uh, interactive or what, or how, what makes your work simpler or uh, uh, easier or take your work to the second level. Um, for sure, the AI and ML models are going to come in with time. So it's always good to, uh, you know, have your, um, uh, have your buy-in and, and, and keep, uh, keep yourself uh, in touch with, with coming technologies as well. Question. I have a question for you guys, for uh, everyone, if you don't mind. Sorry? Go ahead, Mashud, okay. uh, Amir, so, whoever. So, so the question is, uh, do you guys, any of you know any app? Let's suppose I have my own practice and I'm looking in last two weeks or so that anybody you guys know who make uh, any app that I can use for my practice, for my patients, so they can communicate with me. Uh, and in US, you guys already know there is a lot of like HIPAA and everything need to be in consideration. It's not to mm -hmm. it need to be like a, a, a very secure kind of that one rather than just emailing or patient or anything like that. Mm -hmm. EMR, I used it here. It's very, really, very secure. So people message me through that one. So, but that's not easily available. It's a cloud based, but it's still available. But I'm looking for anybody who knows anybody around your family or friend or anybody that who can build up an app that I can use in my practice. So go ahead. Anybody. Uh, so I just wanted to share some similar thing. Thank you, Momin. Uh, it's been a good talk. Uh, in my practice, we do send all the messages for the patients like smoking cessation advice, uh, patient call outs for their diabetic reviews. We also mm -hmm. forward them uh, links to pocket medic videos for their diabetic reviews and stuff like that. Uh, and it's all linked to our GP system, which we use. Um, okay. So this, uh, this service has been used in Wales for some time now. And we have got uh, sure, yes. funded by the Welsh government, actually. 
and it's quite useful patients get appointment reminders their chronic disease uh, appointments which are like you know once a year for blood tests and stuff like that so they they, they all go through that um there's so that is through the government this is attached to our gp system so it's okay. incorporated into the system but there are other apps like uh, if you go uh, there's a gp the uh, gp at hand there's a app uh, on okay. which patient uh, doctors uh, are registered and they provide consultations skype business is another app you can use for similar kind of things in which you can consult your patients by video and also use to send messages to your patient and because it's a business idea uh, so there may be a charge around it um, but it's quite a useful and secure method of using it so again i think mashood i think that's the question i would ask you how much uh, dollars are you ready to spend <laughs> He, so he can spend anything. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, you, you require. Don't a underestimate my food. <laughs> no, the question is not about the money. That's it. The question exactly. I have it. I mean, if it's so, if it's feasible, <laughs> if it's feasible or not, because I mean, obviously, when you spend okay. money, you 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 spending in 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 your business. So obviously, you're gonna get in return. So, so, so can I? How much? Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So that's that's what I. So what you. So the, the way I understand what what you are saying, you you kind of need a personalized app with a, oh. with a personalized uh, dashboard as well, and it and it should be secure. So a lot of so the, all this stuff I'm showing you, this is HIPAA compliant. Most okay. all my funding actually comes from US. It doesn't matter. I'm working in Pakistan. Okay. It has to be com, uh, compliant, and uh, there are a lot of very talented folks working here. I have a couple of engineers, and uh, and that's the that's the good thing. They are they are quite smart. So I I would uh, so so for me, what I can personally suggest that if you can. Uh, my email is there. If you can email me and uh, let me know what are your specific requirements, okay. I can uh, set you up with some of the folks who are uh, working on this. And then I can also look into what are some um, uh, uh, some of the apps available for from uh, from in US, which you need. You just need to um, tailor made it accordingly. But I would suggest that. If you're designing it, you're spending money, then have it personalized according to the, your own requirement. It's not a big thing. It's not. It's not. Not the technology we have right now. Yeah. There is an app called Patient Access in which you can, uh, you know, anyone can register their well, business. That, yeah, that's a good one as well. Yeah. yeah. But but again, I I think Gang uh, the way I I, I you know moved Mashud Sab ka jana, he needs a personalized designed app. <laughs> All right. कैलिफोर्निया बट इन एरेजोना Kind of. I I travel to East Coast a lot. From okay. Years come this side, and nobody come on the west side, west beside California. So oh, anybody. Oh, man, oh, mangi jang hai, boy. Come this side any time. Moment, boy. I'm East Coast. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. Hello. Who was that? Was it uh, Sakib? Huh? Did you ask a question? No, I think I, I think Sarosh. Sarosh. Was it Sarosh? Salman is there, Fasha. Salman, go bang karo. No, no, Salman is. I think it was Sarosh. I'm not wrong. Salman is there. Pooch raha hai ki Gurdwara kyun khola gaya hai. Acha chodo. Next week, jo hai, I think I'm giving a presentation. I think next week I'm giving a presentation for. For, for preventive medicine and the screening and everything it's not only as a doctor as a as a, we are just touching the 40s now or passing the 40s so we should know about ourselves too that what we need to go through the screening from there, from here so that is a very interesting topic so i'm talking about all the how what we have to do for the preventive medicine if you on guys... that note for farjad is still 39 so he's not attending next one <laughs> Uh, Mashud, Mashud, so is that, is that what you're planning to do, Mashud? You'll be talk, giving that talk yes. next yeah. month, yeah? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. 
Yes, yes, get in touch and let me know. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sure. Guys, I'm signing out. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. The scene. Final words. The scene. The scene. I can't hear you. Have you muted yourself? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Especially those who attended for the first time. Please uh, send your email to Mansoor for certificates. Thank you once again, Momin, for excellent presentation. Very good questions. And we'll see you again, inshallah, next month on the 15th of December, Sunday on the 15th of December. Um, 5 p.m., Mansoor, okay? UK time? Yeah, 5 p.m., okay. Thank you. 5 p.m. Mansoor, UK. Would that be okay with you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Five is right now. Uh, you, you, you guys started today at 6, am I correct? 6 p.m. Yeah, 6 p.m. UK time. Yeah, so yeah. that's fine. I'm fine. 5 is fine. Yeah. 5 p.m. Okay. Okay. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye now. Thank All you. right. Thank you. Love us. And good night. Bye -bye.